What's up, everybody? Who's ready for season two of Rice and Beans? First episode, we got the amazing Tyler Steelman, my personal best friend. I think you know him from Seventeen again. Uh, he's in a new movie coming out at the end of this year with Ron Perlman. What, what's it called again, Tyler? This game's called Murder. Oh, called Murder. Okay, and right now we're going to be starting off with number one topic of first episode, season two. So good to be back, everybody. John McAfee. Holy Ooh. shit. Tyler's guy. I think, I don't know how to describe that other than holy shit. This is, uh, sounds like a little bit like Epstein 2.0, right? Well, I would describe it like that because we saw the documentary. He's, he's into being shit on by, uh, by slightly of age prostitutes. Didn't he, uh, didn't he have sex with the well? Did I read that correctly? Have you heard that? He, like, that'd be less weird than what he's accused of. <laughs> like, he had like a haram of like, he was in the Dominican Republic, so they say they're 18 years old, but we know how that goes with baseball. But not judging, not ju that's more about the medical system. But he had a bunch of 18 to 22 year old prostitutes and they didn't have sex, but he would, they would be in a hammock and cut a hole and then shit on his stomach. This, is this, shows, this shows PG-13, so yeah. I should, I'm sorry, I just said poo. I mean, they I, mean, on stomach. I, I mean, dude, we live in Hollywood out here, dude. Some people out here are in some pretty kinky, weird shit. I mean, so who am I to judge, right? I mean, we all had to pay our stripes, get on Disney Channel one way or another. Tyler. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He, he, got, he got mad. I think this was a year or two ago. Um, uh, Michael Keaton was cast to play him in a movie. And he got mad because he said that he identified as a black man and he didn't agree with uh, Michael Keaton playing him. So he's such a troll. He's, he's, <laughs> so that's my conspiracy theory is like, you, I'm, I'm usually the guy that gets us in trouble and is on the conspiracy side. Mm -hmm. But I think this time he's the ultimate troll and is trying to set it up like it was some conspiracy. And going, he, going off of that, are you talking about his tweets where he said he would never kill himself? He got, yeah. I think he knew he was going to, because he's like, he openly would brag about cheating, not paying his taxes. And he'd be like, they think I'm broke, but I clearly, I have $800 million. Well, that's a crime. <laughs> like, the guy that Wesley Snipes got put away for five, you're 71 years old. And what Wesley Snipes did wasn't even that bad. He just didn't think he had to pay the taxes. Yeah, the Kathy knew better and was hiding yep. it. Never take ta tax advice from Wesley Snipes. I, uh, I'm going to get that <laughs> on a tattoo somewhere. Yeah, if you want to kill a vampire, he's he's all right. But if you're uh, if it's tax day, <laughs> you might want to hit up Michael Keaton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, 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 or man, even Trump. Hit, I mean, Trump. Uh, or man, hit up any of these Fortune 500 companies. See, oh, Bezos. Like, yeah, absolutely. See, dude, here's the only fucking difference between uh, McAfee and these companies. You know, these damn companies they they don't pay taxes legally. This guy's just doing it the illegal way. So. Yeah, I agree. The, the, both the CEO of McDonald's, I'm sure, likes to get shit on his stomach. Oh, <laughs> the I, they all have that in common. What, Sorry. What was the CEO of Carl's Jr. doing, dude? I, I know he was working for the Trump Organization for a little while there. He was almost no. He he. They had they nominated him to be the Secretary of Labor, but didn't go through. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. We Carl Jr. is terrible. Right? We'd all have been replaced by robots by now. If that had yeah. Happened. Can we say this? So at least John had the balls to practice what he preached. He he flat out said publicly, "I don't pay taxes." <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. That sounds, pretty, that sounds pretty fucking stupid to me. That's like you know, that's like these these people that get on social media after they did like a bank robbery, and they're the ones flashing the money, going, "Ooh, balling out, balling out." It's like you know, after you guys seeing that, watching that, going, "Oh, awesome! You're posting all the evidence we're ever going to need online." Great. Yeah, I think I think Kaiser Soze is like the cooler guy that you would never guess. Not Kevin Spacey, but Kaiser Soze, the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where you would never guess that he's the, the, the kingpin. Because like John McAfee, I hate to say it, I think he was kind of a poser on tech and programming. Like he did, like he was kind of, like he said he could hack every phone in the world. That was bullshit. He also, and even, said, he also said that he had a, a death time bomb that if he were to be killed, all this information would be released and that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he could have released that during his lifetime too and even with going way back to his uh mac the antivirus software uh, he was famous for kind of like either creating viruses or promoting viruses to get people to buy them so to me he's always been a, more of a salesman but he was, he's kind of funny but he crossed the line in a few areas like killing his neighbor and making designer that's math a, that's a, yeah that's, <laughs> a, that's a, a few life. things yeah that's life that Max actually had to tell me that. I did not know there was, like, such a thing as designer meth. I did not know that. 
Designer yeah. only. <laughs> you, use, you use it recreationally too, right? Recreationally. Yeah, you like that generic, that, uh, what's it called? Yeah. Oh, Wait, yeah. I, I've never though, this is, I've never like, besides Hunter S. Thompson, like he, such a crazy fucking life. And, and the stories turn out to be true. And that's what's so bizarre about him, you know? Oh, Hunter S. Thompson was, he might have done more than uh, McNagg. I'm a huge Hunter S. Thompson fan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like I, I wear this though because i think that is a little apples and oranges because like yeah both wild lifestyles but mcafee was like more of a business person allegedly and hunter s thompson was a journalist as long as he, as long as yeah. long as john gets you know his ashes or body i don't remember which one <laughs> yes by johnny depp um, well i got a question for you guys like which journalist would you hope to kind of go the hunter s thompson route like Anderson Cooper doing doing lines at 4 a.m. Or... Oh, I can I can see. <laughs> like I was telling Tyler, I always had a crush on Barbara Walters. I could see her going off the rails one day, just like you want just to down in. This is 2020, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see Barbara Walters going full gangster one day, just like fuck it, I'm joining the Crips. Doing <laughs> Hell, Hell's Angels. Hell's Angels. Yeah. yeah. I would be amazing. Get on my back, pussy. <laughs> oh, God, guys. Yep, so we got another another crazy mofo off himself. Uh, so what is the conclusion to McAfee? Killed, him, killed himself, didn't kill himself. What do we think, guys? He's a, tr- he's a troll. He did those tweets on purpose. He's a troll. Yeah, same. So, so yeah. We, I think we're all in kind of agreement here that, sure, you know, he could have stoked the fires a little bit. Obviously, there's a lot of bullshit with the kill switch that did not happen. Seems like just a very eccentric kind of Howard Hughes, grow his fingers, fingernails out, never leave the house type of guy, you know? Well, someone was telling me that he did, you know, he was murdered by the CIA or whatever. And they were telling me that he, McAfee tweeted that he stored all of his information in that, that building that blew up in Miami. And that was a fake tweet. <laughs> like, as cool as that would have been, and like, that would have been cool if that were, you know, not, not, not cool, but like, you know, in an intrigue, mystery type way. Mm-hmm. Please don't cancel me. But uh, that was a fake tweet. I looked into it. It was doctored. Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't send me any money. Speaking of avoiding taxes, second topic we got on the docket today. Looks like the whole Trump organization is going to be indicted on not one, not two, not three, but 15 different charges. Max, you think it's bullshit. Tell me why. It's not bold, it's real. It's kind of, but it's like, it's, it's so petty that it took three years and like $20 million to discover that his employees didn't pay taxes on US open tickets or, or like uh, their, their rented apartment. Or it's just, if you look at the 15 counts, they're all just like, what the fuck? Like, it's kind of like if, if uh, the FBI was investigating you for three years and they got you, they like got you on 15 speeding charges. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. And, like, out of, out of all the scummy things you can do with taxes, like putting your grandkids through school and, like, getting them U.S. Open tickets, like, this was kind of, ugh. It sounds like this has been a long time coming, though. And this just sounds like one of those things, dude, where they're building their cases. It's like, think about Al Capone, dude. How many, how many things were they trying to get Capone on? And then eventually they couldn't get him for murder or racketeering, so they get him for tax evasion. Well, he, uh, Capone got Cosby, and that's interesting history that no one realizes. Because the, the, the reason why Bill Cosby got out of jail was because uh, the, he basically made a deal with a prosecutor. Like, hey, you, you testify, and then we're gonna, you're going to have, like, immunity from whatever you testify on in a criminal case. And then they're like, ha-ha, gotcha. And they used what he said to, to get him because he admitted to, I think, giving pills. So, like, just it, it wasn't good testimony. But with Capone, it was the same deal. They basically offered to settle with Capone. And then they like, he admitted to a bunch of like tax crimes. And they're like, gotcha, Capone. <laughs> no one's gonna give a shit. And then they, uh, yeah, got him in jail for 20 years. I, I, think, I, I think I'm more interested in, in Trump himself, his taxes, which I, I have never been released. They yeah. have, they have them. So, uh, Cy Vance, this investigation, they, they were the it, first it, ones it, to actually get his returns. It, it, and here's the thing is like, it, his returns might look bad, but they're probably gonna look better than Bezos is. Or musts or Carl icons, which my, is the my, sad part. My argument, my argument there would be, 
when you're the president, you have to uh, set a standard and, a, and a, you have to, you, you know, Bezos and Musk and those type of guys, they're wild boys, like, right? Like, tr when, you, when you're the president, you, there's a standard. Do you, you know what I mean? Like Kennedy, no, but like, uh, I, I know what you're saying, but these, uh, these 15 charges were all from pre-president. Uh, they were all pre-2016. Uh, pre that's why they seem like particularly, and that's the scary part, because on one hand, it would be pretty fun to have like DOJ and, and district attorneys just going after politicians I don't like, but it's kind of a slippery slope to be like, we want to get this guy, let's get him on parking tickets, flip it, and they, they openly talk about it, like we want to flip Weasel, Weaselberg to get well, to get Trump and that's you know, you're right Stephen that is probably the strategy that's well Trump Trump fucking opened himself up to it he was the one going lock her up he's the one that started this shit you know you opened that can of worms that's why I say it's like on one hand it would be fun on the other hand it's it's dangerous so I'm, I'm with you like it's weird like because yeah. where do you draw the line because there mean, are I'm glad now we're in agreement on that, but dude, fuck, four years ago, everyone's shouting, lock her up, lock her up. They didn't lock her up, though. Like, why can't we get Chelsea on parking tickets? Like, come on. That would have been sick. <laughs> well, you should, I mean, you know, if Trump would have won the 2020 election, who knows what would have happened, man. But this is one of those things, so it's like, the week of, it's like super exciting, and you're like, finally, they got the bastard. But that's how we were with, like, the impeachment and stuff. And then, you know, a week goes by, nothing ever happens, and everything returns to normal. I feel like this is what's going to happen. Exactly. The impeachment lawyer, by the way, Daniel Goldman, and maybe we'll link the video, he, he basically said these are probably, like, the most indictments they have. And the hopes was to flip Weaselbaum. But there's, like, not enough years in jail. Like, it's a real threat. And so this is probably it. And these cases usually settle. And so it's like interesting that the Trump organization is fighting it. Well, I mean, obviously they're going to fight it. I mean, and they're definitely, you know, obviously thinking about running again in 2024. He's obviously been talking about it on Fox News, hinting at it every inter inter every interview he's been, been on. He's still, he's still doing rallies, I believe. Yeah, he wants to do one in Florida. And like Ron DeSantis was like, yo, like, not this week. Yeah, Maybe no. wait a few uh, weeks until we find the bodies. Oh, uh, yeah with the that's that's a terrible situation and that like wow we really gotta i'm in a high rise right now i'm on the seventh floor but like i've been checking for cracks yeah actually can we talk a little bit about that what yeah what happened was somebody warned about that and they didn't want to look into it and oh yeah they looked into it and the allegation is that they paid off like city inspectors that's the allegation don't kick us off youtube but they have and they have pictures of it of just like cracks and like foundational damages because the building was made so long ago and there were just like some basic design flaws. Like apparently under the pool, it was like flat when the base should have been like sloped to let the water out. Mm -hmm. And so just like, there just was so much cracks and they, they made a report in like 2018, 19, being like, we got to fix this. There's just like critical flaws that need to be addressed. And they were like, yeah, but they kind of kicked the can on it. And they were saying they were going to start working on it next month. Is this kind of like another thing? Like here, out here we have an L, out, out here in LA, we pretty much retrofitted all the buildings for earthquakes. Is it kind of, kind of the same thing we need to do that? Or what are you thinking? Well, we have to, like, that's like that's the kind of a pain to me about all the Green New Deal stuff is like weatherization should be the top priority is it doesn't matter what we do or what's happening. Like there's crazy shit has happened and will continue to happen uh, weather-wise. And a lot of infrastructure that we're in as we've kind of moved to like a more dense society, we're all living on top of each other. Yeah, a lot of stuff isn't weatherized and just like out of code because of corruption and under the table looking the other way. And but so, yeah, ab absolutely. Here's but this was uh, this was more just like laziness because it was an old here's building. Here's the thing, though. We, we know we're dealing with this. I mean, literally, uh, maybe maybe the people of New Orleans, you know, during Katrina, you know, would have been a good person, good people to ask about that. I mean, maybe if we'd have retrofitted those damn levees. Uh, yeah, Hurricane Katrina wasn't that intense of a hurricane. It, no, it was. It was the levees that were. Exactly. The infrastructure is not kept up with, man. You know, that's why, you know, hopefully we can get this Biden infrastructure built on because, dude, it's our oh, look at our potholes. Every isn't, every, isn't like 5% of the Biden infrastructure bill about actual infrastructure. You know, it's if he I, took I, out the free college and all that crap, I'd be with this. You, this really should be pretty bipartisan here. When, when, when the company Domino's is filling more potholes in the Department of Transportation, we have a problem. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess that, then you realize why John didn't want to pay taxes. They're not filling up our potholes. Yeah, they? where was it going? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's just it, man. I really believe that's what most people are, are pissed off about. You know, sure, I'll pay my fair share of taxes, but where is the fucking money going? 
It how about the water supply? Like the what? you guys think Flint is the only place with terrible water? And what? I think they're just trying to fix the, the pipes in Flint. So I like I wish we would all come together on this, but we're not. And the question is like who's in charge of the rebuild? Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, yeah, and the, the thing though is there's just so much red tape in uh in, in, in crap like this, dude. Just um Oh gosh, one example, there's a, there's actually a homeless shelter kind of by where I'm at right now. Each one of those units costs like nine to 12, $20,000 for just a little box with a bed and a, and a, and a, and a sink in it. 20 grand because of all the LA red tape and, and garbage. Dude, send my ass over to Lowe's or Home Depot. I'd have that mofo up in, 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 <laughs> for, for 2000 bucks in, in, in 72 hours, man. This is just ridiculous. Yeah, San Francisco has a 10 camp where they're spending, I think, it's either 200 grand or a million dollars per per person that lives there. I was, well, I was, I was listening to somebody say that the people that are in charge of like um, uh, uh, figuring out what to do with the homeless, they're making millions of dollars a year. So it's no wonder why they're taking so long to figure something out. You and, mean, and it's uh, like, and they have a reverse incentive, more homeless people, bigger budget. It's like, mm-hmm. what, what we got, we need, we need more money. What are we going to do? There's more. So they have an incentive to make that designer meth, give it out, get more people homeless. It's crazy. I mean, I live, I live in a, I live in Studio City, California, and just in the last two years, it went from you'd maybe see one homeless person. So like, it's every single block. It's just tense and tense and tense. Oh yeah. I, I don't, I don't envy the politicians that have to figure this out because I, you know, it's. Super- but that's not just a liberal problem, dude. That's all over the country, you know. And and the problem I mean, yeah. really, the problem really is, is. It's kind of a dirty secret, but a lot of these other states send their homeless on buses over to California because, well, where would you rather be be homeless? Chicago, freezing your ass off, or living out on Venice Beach? Oh, yeah, where you actually have a tent city. We should just start giving them bus tickets to Hawaii. That solves the problem. Bus tickets? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Sam Kinison actually had a pretty, pretty honest and funny joke that only gotten, has gotten more true. Uh, the people dream about being homeless in LA. Literally, dumpsters full of food. <laughs> Literally, you you will eat better out of the trash in in California than you would in Pakistan. At some restaurants, yeah, I mean, there is perspective, and like, yeah, for how shitty our infrastructure is, at least like electricity is really accessible, and air conditioning and stuff like you know, that. You're, you're not you're you're probably not going to starve in America because of all the social welfare programs we have out here. But, you know, it, 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 we could be doing a lot better, you know. And that's why Stephen's voting for Trump. Yeah, that, that, that's it, yeah. Don Jr., Don Jr., he wants new blood. Oh, God. So he's getting, was, he wants who, Don Jr. in there. There was a dude on Young Turks that switched sides. Uh, oh, God, he was on Young Turks for a while. Oh, uh, Jimmy Dore? Uh, no, Ruben, Dave Ruben. Yeah. Oh, did he, yeah. Well, he's, he's always switched sides. But, yeah. ta, ta. No, but he, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Because, like, there's a whole crop of people that were like former liberal superstars they're now trying to like carve out a niche in the republican sphere and it's kind of funny because some are succeeding some aren't i think ruben's succeeding but like bill crystal isn't that's kind of funny to watch uh, well, do you guys know who bill crystal is no i don't i know i know who billy crystal is yeah i know right Thought billy that- crystal was much better <laughs> bill crystal was like he was basically one of the, the republican archetypes of like the Patriot Act, the Iraq War, Afghanistan War, and now he's he's full Democrat now because he doesn't like Trump, and it's really funny because he's trying to get Democrats to accept him, and they're like, dude, they're like, they're, like, they're like, you can't eat with us, like, yeah, exactly. Like right now, as we as we speak, he's tweeting about how he's mad that Afghan uh, Joe Biden's pulling out of Afgh- Afghanistan mm-hmm. and stuff oh. like that. Also, so uh, next topic on the docket, we have the New York mayor race. Uh, definitely, since I'm a California, I voted in, I voted in that, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it's uh, twice. I am I am a little pissed off that they that Andrew Yang didn't get in. I'm I'm kind of a Yang gang. I'm a I'm a you know pretty big supporter of UBI. I know Max is even a pretty big supporter of UBI, right? If we're rich, like if you have like I'm, if I'm support dividends, like if we had twenty six trillion dollars in surplus, yeah. Yeah, UBI, universal basic income, right? Yeah, I'm saying if we had a surplus, I would support it. But we we have, I think, thirty trillion in debt. If we had thirty trillion in the in the green, then yeah, give me my money. 
Well, well I, you know, the, the really cool thing about that is, you know, yeah. if we give people a thousand bucks a month, and it's kind of like Yang was saying, it could actually actually kind of balance out a lot of the got hundred other social welfare programs we got going on right now. Or it goes straight into GameStop. Because <laughs> yeah, they, they do have UBI in like Alaska where they, they get oil money and I support that. <laughs> right. And, I, and there's a video of me on YouTube saying, talking about being in the Yang game. Yeah, I, 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 I could have swore you were you were a kind of supporter of his for a while. I'm disenfranchised from him and I got to do a video on this, but I think he's kind of a con man. Is the is the short of it? Oh well, your position is changing here because I remember you were you were you were all Yang Gang back in the day. Because he like there's a lot of people like that, and McAfee's I put in the same category where they say stuff I agree with, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, you're just saying this shit to you know get attention, and just because it's true, I don't necessarily trust his intentions. I think Yang was like ran for office just to get his name up and sell books and get speaker fees. Because like, what has he actually done? I think, I don't know, like, I, I mean, going off what he's done, I'm not sure, but, like, uh, getting his name out, I mean, I think Joe Rogan was enough for him, right? I mean, he's... Oh, Joe Rogan was the one that definitely put him on the map, at least mm-hmm. for me. I don't know yeah. who he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with that, too. He definitely did for me, also. But, uh, no, I'm, like, if he would have, I don't care. If he, if he would have won, that would have been cool, because, like, at the end of the day, it'd be cool to test out all of his ideas, everything from paying UFC fighters more. So, <laughs> like... Yeah, he has a lot. He has a lot of priorities, but uh, what a crazy election! We still don't have a. Even by the time we release this episode, we probably won't have a winner. You know what's weird though, man? Uh, Democrats really want to convince people about you know election security. Everything's fine, and then these dumbasses. Literally, they count one hundred and twenty-five thousand test ballots. Obviously, thank God they caught it. But dude, that is even as a Democrat myself. Come on, guys, get it together, really. But is is it noble that they came out and not and didn't try to hide it? Or well, they, they didn't really come out. It's like so. Eric Adams at first was like he disputed it. He goes like because Andrew Yang was like math, math, mathematically, I lost and Eric Adams won. Then this new this they did the ring choice counting, which included all these one hundred twenty five thousand test ballots, and he was the first one, Eric Adams, to be like these. There's an irregularity. And then, like a day later, they're like, "Oops, our bad. We <laughs> counted an extra hundred three five thousand. Want some so pizza?" How many, <laughs> like, how many times? How many times do you think that's happened and not been caught? I, I mean, know. that's a, that's a, what that's the biggest, you know. Uh, hated it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Let's think about just in the last, you know, presidential election, how how close Biden won some of these states. He won what pencil? I, okay, don't quote me, but he won only Pennsylvania by what thirteen thousand around there and we're talking about 125,000 in a in a state election and no in a, in a city election oh yeah i mean you, you preach the choir here and so, then yeah. historically speaking uh dick gregory uh, dick gregory one of my favorite comedians he ran for president is kind of a joke and it was either a primary or just one state he like accidentally was like winning and it was a computer error in 19 like 66 it was like 100,000 votes so like it, it has happened the question is like, has it been caught every time? So it's like, it, how would we know? And it's not like you're a racist yeah, bigot well, if you question the election. I, 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 will, I will agree with you here that, man, it, it does not help because we're, some of these states in the presidential election, yeah, they're decided by 13,000 votes. And we have 125,000 test dummy ballots that were counted in a city election. And then thankfully we caught it. But man, no, does that put, put people's mind at ease? No. No. <laughs> like, and a part of it, like, to, to, like, counter myself, like, uh, one, one really big problem is, like, a lot of people that ran for election board didn't really understand what the job entailed. Because there's some people that, like, especially in these, like, elected official positions, there is no qualifications besides you win. And we've seen that a lot. So a lot of it is due to just straight, uh, just, like, veep level dopiness. One one thing I do want to talk about, I actually do like the ranked choice system, mainly because it just gives people more options. Oh, gosh. You know, there's some things I agree with some candidates on, some things I don't agree on, and vice versa. You know, a lot of people, though, in America are tend to be single-issue voters, and I think it kind of helps, I don't know, maybe educate people a little bit more about some of the other positions people have. I think it's a good thing. You don't like it, Max. Why don't you like it? Well, I'll take it. I'll, we'll talk about the root problem because the, the root problem is for sure uh, that 
most elections only have one candidate, period. It's usually one party. In LA and Chicago, they're usually Democrats. If you're in an election in Alabama, you're probably only gonna see Republicans. And then even if you're in a competitive district, you're only gonna see a Republican or Democrat. We need more candidates, period, across party lines. And there's a bunch of state laws that make it harder by design to run for office. Like for example, if I ran as an independent in Illinois, I would need 10 times the amount of like signature requirements. And that's why Kanye West, for example, got kicked off the ballot in most of the states he tried to run in, because they make it harder to be an independent. So that's, that's, the, that's the real issue. Was, was and Kanye I'm just like, I, I think root cause, like, there's too many variables. The more complicated you make something, the easier it is for it to mess up. I thought Kanye was a Republican. He was independent. Oh. He ran as independent. I mean, he was a Republican, but he like, he ran like officially the party was independent. Oh, the birthday party. He was the birthday party. Oh, yeah, it was a birthday. Because when he wins, it's going to be a birthday. You get oh, overpriced white t-shirts and, 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 and shoes and, with holes in them for $300. Happy birthday. That always reminds me of that one song. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. 50 Cent. No, that's it's 2 chains, isn't it? No. <laughs> yeah, no. That no, is. it's we're going to play like it's your birthday. Like it's your birthday. And oh, we don't yeah. give off shh. It's oh, PG-13 yeah. show. It's your birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, well, we're thinking about two different songs, but... Oh, no. Uh, he won the big uh, booty hoe for his birthday. It uh, wouldn't be my birthday. He wanted, he wanted to be buried next to the Gucci store. See, that's, that would be... Bur if Bernie would have won if that would have been a slogan. There will be a book booty hoe for everybody that votes for Bernie Sanders. Big booty hoes for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I do not want to be buried in Arlington Cemetery. I want to be buried under the Gucci store. <laughs> <laughs> bury me under the Louis star and my back is giving out but these yeah. big booty hoes they will help yeah <laughs> i don't i don't get why rappers embrace gucci and louis when those are brands for 75 year old women or widowed to each your own to each your own man yeah uh, exactly gotcha. consumers culture that's actually the richest because bezos decided to you know a little deviate split his uh, fortune into the richest person in the world on paper is now the guy that owns all those brands. To, to call, was he, uh, he owns he owns all like the Gucci, listen, dude, Birkin do, bag stuff. Do I look like a guy that wears Gucci? No, I don't wear Gucci. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right <laughs> yeah, <now>. I wear. <laughs> I, I don't wear Gucci. Okay, I wear George. That's I think what this is. George. I think I'm, I'm sitting. I'm sitting here in a fox and the hound sweater. I don't wear Gucci. <laughs> Literally, but yeah, my wardrobe consists of crap I got in gift bags. I'm like Walmart everything. Like this is George. I got Russell. <laughs> hey, but yo, by the way, Walmart, Gucci. If you do want to sponsor us, I, I I'm, a, I'm a size uh, eight wide. So just throwing it out there. Yeah, no, so for, oh, that's a good question for all of us. What, like, who would you show for? Or, like, who is someone where, like, for the right price, you'd be like, uh, I'll... Dude, we're ex-Disney Channel actors. Obviously, you know, we, we've... Well, hoed, China, yeah. Yeah, we've hoed out for China and the mouse a little bit. I, I think, Yeah. I don't know. I, I believe... We're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna be like, we're gonna be like John Cena, and we're just gonna apologize for recognizing countries. You have to dance. You have to do, apologize in Mandarin. Do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> was that what he they did? should have had a monkey head on him and some symbols while he was doing wait, 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 wait. You didn't, you I, didn't, I don't you know didn't, about this what's going on here what, what did John Cena do oh that was terrible he called Taiwan a country or Tal you want to talk about this yeah yeah he he, they, he said that uh, uh, what's the first country that uh, uh, Fast and the Furious 39 is going to open in and he and he said the first country would be Taiwan and then China got mad that he recognized them as a country and he uh it was what less than a day or so later in mandarin like great mandarin too like i don't know how he learned it so quick uh word for word apologize even though they're a country oh so, god i thought i thought he was so so sorry i am so so sorry i made a and, big and, big mistake please <laughs> please chi i gotta look that up i thought Kate, kevin spacey's apologies give me some designer matt <laughs> I can I can ignore the concentration camps that China, you know, currently has. You know, that's you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know, actors ignore that, but God forbid they won't show our movie there. Yeah, you know. I know, right? Well, we got to get that overseas dollar. That's what, all it's about. Yeah. Man. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about, sadly. But hey, uh, be sure to like, subscribe this video. Coming up, season two. We got a great season planned up ahead of us. Thank you guys so much for joining. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this. 
Tyler Steelman, uh, anything you want us to promote? You're an acting teacher just like I am. Where can we find you to take acting classes? Yeah, justbeactingstudio.com. I do it with my partner, Katie Sarife. She's the star of Annabelle Comes Home. Uh, we teach acting together, and uh, we're, we're a year in, and we have, you know, it's growing. It's super quick right now, and our, we're filling up. So if you guys are interested uh, and you want to learn from some great actors, we have we have a lot. Of, we have a Don uh, uh, Ruiz from uh, Suicide Squad, the new one. He's in it. And yeah, uh, check us out online. Okay, guys. Well, I think that's it for our show. Thank you guys so much for being with us today. Welcome, Rice and Beans, back. We're back, baby. Till next time, stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Eat some bacon. Rice, bean, out.